Well, I think I'm going to try to do a little bit of a video of uh, assembling this uh, Briggs 14 and a half horse motor. Uh, I'm just going to assemble it so it's assembled and probably eventually I'll pull it back apart. So I don't think I'm going to put any gaskets in it or anything like that. Uh, for one thing, the cylinder needs hone and I don't have a hone right now. And uh, so just to kind of make sure that everything kind of stays uh, oh, without getting spoiled or whatever, ruined, damaged, whatever, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get it together and then, then I can set it somewhere. So uh, that's what I'm going to do anyways. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start by building the crank back in. And uh, then I'll assemble the crankcase back together and then I'll work on the head side of it. I started by putting some oil down in the crankcase. Get a little bit of oil in there and then I can put this crank down in there. And I should have probably brought my tripod out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this very good with one hand in the camera. I guess it would help if I had this over the hole. There we go. Okay, this thing, this one here has got a, um, I think it's kind of like a counterbalancer system. I'm not sure how to describe it or really if that's even what it's called, but it pins onto the side here and uh, then as the crank piston goes around this thing here actually moves back and forth kind of a neat little setup but just thought I'd show you that well I assembled the pistons and pre-lubed with some uh, actually I used PJ1 chain lube black label and the reason I did that is it's a nice tacky lube that'll kind of hold itself there while this thing's in storage and it'll uh, be adequate for keeping me from scoring the cylinders anymore. Alright, I'm compressing the rings using a, a hose clamp. Uh, I don't have, it's another thing I don't have is a ring compressor for this size of a piston, so I'm using a hose clamp. Um, just wanted to mention in the case anybody's not tried putting a cylinder in, a piston into the cylinder with a hose clamp, it's not like extremely easy, but you can do it. You just have to keep working it and then get your clamp on there and get it tightened down, try to get the right size clamp. And uh, then I use a rubber or a dead blow hammer is what I use. Just keep kind of tapping it a little bit and working with it until you finally get it in there and then uh, something else I want to mention is this uh, rod cap can't be put on upside down or backwards, whatever you want to call it. It's got two different size bolts on it. One's a fine thread, one's a coarse thread, one's bigger, one's smaller. And then your uh, cap itself has got a different groove on one side than it does on the other side. So you can't accidentally get that on backwards. Um, I make sure I put plenty of oil on everything in here. I, uh, Make sure there's a lot of oil on the camshaft and on the lifters. And oil, 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 oil. Uh, this here is your timing mark on the camshaft. And then your crank gear drops down on there. There's one key for that. Put that on the key. And then here's your timing mark over here on that. So uh, what I do is uh, turn that over this way you can just about you got just enough room to get it on there once you get it in this position but well, piston's fitting tight right now but anyways I'll have to put the camera down but anyways just turn your camshaft to your uh, timing or your crankshaft to your timing mark straight to the side then put your uh, camshaft in you may have to work it a little bit one tooth or another whatever just Make sure at the end result that it's lined up. 
And once you got that on there, you got your two timing marks lined up like that. I think you can see it all right. You see a little, little dent right there, and there's the one on the camshaft. So, alrighty. And this is what it looked like once you get your oil slinger on there. This is uh, oil slinger, and it also activates the governor lever based on centrifugal force. As this spins faster, this will force these uh, gar little uh, counterweights outward, which uh, reduces your governor. So that's that part. If you need to know which uh, bolts are your head bolts and which ones are your crankcase bolts, uh, crankcase has got that little um, elongated tip on it, and the head bolt doesn't. Other than that, they're pretty much the same, same thread, same everything, same length with the exception of that tip. And then the other thing is, is there should be 10 of the crankcase bolts and there should only be 8 of the head bolts if you've got everything. Right on this one here, there's uh, one aluminum push rod and one steel push rod. The aluminum push rod goes on the intake side and the steel one goes on the exhaust side. And the best way to remember that is uh, steel holds up the heat better than aluminum does, of course. So put the steel one on the hot side and aluminum one on the cold side. Okay, I jumped ahead a little bit. I got the bottle plate on there, the governor lever's on there, the uh, tube and the breather's on there. Uh, put this little cover on. Uh, Tappets are on, push rods are in, muffler, or the, if you want to call it a muffler, exhaust pipe's on. Um, and I got this flywheel just sitting on here because I got to turn the piston in order, I got to turn the crank in order to um, get my tap, my lifters adjusted right. And uh, that's where we're at so far. Well, here's the final deal then. Missing some screws and missing the breather cover and I'm not sure what all, but that's sad anyways. I think somebody must have taken some of it apart from before I got it. But, uh, so anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching.